<laughs> Hello, this is Jocelyn. I wanted to redo my flesh recap from last night. I was so full of emotions. Um, that episode just totally knocked me out. And I realized when I did it, there was just so much to say that I wasn't able to digest it all. So I've been listening to my other podcast. If you're wondering, I'm on my break right now. So this is just a quick recap of The Flash. I just want to put a disclaimer out. If you haven't watched The Flash yet and you record it and you want to watch it, well then it's nice to see you and just move along. But if you just want to just hear my quick thoughts about The Flash last night, then um, just kick back, relax. Let's just get started because like I said, I'm on my break. I got to get back to doing what I'm doing. Anyways, wow. So last night was called The Shade. They focused on two main characters, or two main storylines. Wally West, and for him to get his powers through Dr. Alchemy. And so that was going to happen so that he could become Kid Flash. Um, versus Caitlin Snow, where um, she's trying to fight the powers that are manifesting in her. And she wants, she doesn't want to become... Okay, sorry. She does not want to become Killer Frost. So she's trying to suppress it, hide it from everyone. Um, so, let's just start with Kid Flash. Um, I'm just gonna... There you go. Okay, so Wally West, he's starting to have more and more dreams about his life as a speedster. Um, from what Joe's realizing is that those are not dreams. That's a way of Dr. Alchemy trying to get to him. So, uh, so he told Barry and Barry felt it was time for them, for him to disclose to Joe, Iris, and Wally what happened in the Flashpoint and how Wally was a speedster way back when. And he did tell him that he did get hurt, but Wally's not hearing it because all he heard was that he was he's actually meant to be a speedster, so this is just his day. Uh, Joe is not happy about it because that's his son trying to protect him. In any case, Wally said, no, it's not going to happen to me. Well, lo and behold, he starts to get more and more possessed. Dr. Alchemy's trying to take his mind. Um, really interesting because I think, I think Wally West, he's really playing really good and, you know, he, he's trying to hide from Dr. Alchemy so they put him in the pipeline for his own safety. He's just a bored kid in there, poor guy. He can't even do his self, uh, smartphone, can't play solitaire. He's just stuck in there. But lo and behold, Dr. Alchemy can still get to him and he's just messing with his mind. He is just, this poor guy, he's just totally tortured. Anyways, um, they decide to use, Wally West actually... Volunteers himself to be the bait because there's no other way to stop Dr. Alchemy. So he he has Barry and his dad with the SWAT team. They come and they follow him to this place where Dr. Alchemy is. And it's really interesting because it's towards the end of the show. And I saw it had only like seven minutes left of the show. And I'm like, man, what's about to go down? Um. Anyways, this inside is like this creepy room where there's a whole bunch of guys in hoods. And I'm wondering, is Draco Malfoy in one of them? Is this like Lord Voldemort again? He's under Dr. Alchemy's mask. Is that what's happening? Not quite sure. Um, and luckily, Barry was there to um, try and stop it. But then in the end, things started happening. They introduced a new speedster in there that was like totally awesome. No one can see him, but Barry could be here. Barry's a speedster. Um... And then for the fact that Wally saw the stone, there was a stone that Dr. Alchemy has. And in a sense, it kind of reminded me of the Sorcerer's Stone. And so, yep, sure enough, Wally did touch it. And so now he's in a, in like a cocoon. So it looks like I think that's where the husk came from. In any case, Barry's in a shitload of trouble again. Um, the second aspect is Caitlin. Caitlin, she didn't want to say this, but, you know, she did admit it to Cisco. So she did tell Cisco that she has icy powers. Cisco vibed her, found out she doesn't does become Killer Frost, but there's an assumption that she's bad. I'm starting to wonder maybe it's the other way around. Maybe it's Cisco who has to deal with the dark side. So we're kind of wondering about that piece. In any case, he outed her, which was just not cool because she wasn't ready to just explain it. Anyways, that went out. 
So now everybody knows, and Barry's, he's feeling like it's his fault. And I think now Caitlin's starting to realize that her anger is towards Barry, because this is all Barry's fault, because he messed with the Flashpoint line. Um, I, I think next week we're going to see more and more of that develop with Caitlin. Um, overall, it was a really good episode. I thought it was good. I like the fact that at the very end, um, what I wanted to wait for, like I said, if you haven't seen this show, but you want to know about it, then so be it. But um, at the very end, that speedster I was telling you about, I've been reading about it for quite some time. So now I actually got to see Savitar. And apparently he's a speed god or the god of speed. And I guess he's human. So there must be someone underneath it. I think now the mystery is who is Dr. Alchemy and who is Savitar? They're saying it could be Draco Malfoy, it could be Zoom, it could be another character, it could be Ethan Thawne uh, from before, it could be Harry Wells, it could be anyone. But I would like to be able for them to pick someone that we don't know about, that is not just the obvious. I'd like for them to like really shock us this time around as far as the writers. I wonder. Anyways, those are my thoughts. Um, I don't know. I just love The Flash. I love The Flash. I love Supergirl. Thanks for watching. Um, I, don't know. I just enjoy talking about this stuff because I don't know who else would listen. In any case, have a good day. I'm going to get back to work. I got to make the dollar. Okay, bye.